Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator of the Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, October 24th, is the 75th anniversary of the Battle of the Cebollian Sea. The Japanese center force, comprised of battleships, heavy cruisers, and destroyer escorts, were sailing through the Cebollian Sea on their way from the western side of the Philippines through the islands towards the invasion beaches of Leyte on the eastern side where the American fleet was. Admiral Halsey's third fleet aircraft carriers were mostly out of position. They had expended much of their fuel and ammunition supporting the initial invasions in Leyte earlier in the week. Many of them were off resupplying. So the counterattacks that they were able to mount as the Japanese battleships forced their way through the Cebollian Sea were smaller than could have been achieved and spread out over the course of the day. Curita's battleships were sailing through and had been previously spotted by American submarines Darter and Dace. When they radioed the position to Admiral Halsey, Admiral Halsey passed down to his carrier commander, Mitcher, to launch whatever attacks they could make with the carrier forces available. So throughout the day, we see a series of aircraft carriers coming back from resupply and launching what attacks they could, uh, rather than a single concentration of force able to overwhelm the Japanese. The haphazard air attacks resulted in the damaging of several of the Japanese ships and the sinking of the super battleship Musashi. Musashi was one of only two battleships built heavier than America's Iowa class. They mounted 18-inch guns and had the thickest armor ever placed on a battleship. Because the attacks were haphazard, it took 17 bombs and 19 torpedoes to finally sink Musashi. When American carrier aviators managed to sink Yamato later in the war, they concentrated on one side of the ship so that the torpedoes all overwhelmed the torpedo defense of the Japanese ship and caused her to roll over and sink. And the torpedo planes didn't go in until last. First, the fighters strafed the anti-aircraft gun crews. Then the dive bombers attacked, destroying several of the heavy armored anti-aircraft guns. Then the torpedo planes attacked an already damaged enemy. In the Saboyan Sea, Musashi was able to shrug off hit after hit as torpedoes crashed into both sides of the ship, causing her to sink in a balanced manner instead of rolling over right away. The battle also featured air attacks on the American fleet, and the last American fast carrier to be sunk during the war, the Independence-class light carrier Princeton, was sunk during this action. It was the only significant loss on the American side. Thank you for watching today as we celebrate the 75th anniversary of the Battle of the Philippine Sea. Tune back in later for more content, and thank you to George Leone for contributing much of the history we've discussed today.